Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And in the post-apocalyptic world of Fallout 4, radiation-induced mutations and two centuries worth of evolution have created no shortage of disturbing and horrifying creatures that now threaten what little remains of humanity. From giant hermit crabs to glowing insects, many new forms of life have entered the food chain, and we people aren't always on top anymore. But just about every disgusting organism you encounter in the wasteland will have at least a couple of unique variants that can spawn in alongside the original beast. Each special variant has a few differences in both their appearance and raw stats that keep them easily discernible from the normal creature. Typically speaking, most variants will be more powerful than the original and be much less common. Oftentimes, they won't even begin spawning in until the Soul Survivor has reached a certain level. However, some of these creature types are especially rare and difficult to come across, and it's these that I find to be the most fascinating and wanted to explore today. So, that's what we're gonna do. Sit back and relax as we dive into five more rare and interesting creature types you may have missed in Fallout 4. Starting off, Mirelurks are the radioactive descendants of pre-war crustaceans and have dominated much of the Commonwealth's coastline since the bombs fell. Often found in large groups, these crabs present a considerable threat to anyone on the beaches of post-war America. But it's on the island of Far Harbor that if the player is level 42 or higher, a special type of the mutants called Blood Rage Mirelurks will have a small chance to spawn in. These crimson-colored crustaceans are no joke. With nearly four times the health and damage points as a normal Mirelurk, Blood Ragers are certainly to be feared. Their appearance is also something to behold. A darker, almost black shell with glowing red elements gives them a very fearsome look. Though, at least they'll be slightly easier to recognize. Aside from their already incredible 650 points of base health, you'll also have to bear in mind that the Blood Ragers' 200 points of armor value is nearly four times that of the original. And I'm sure you're already aware what a great armor rating normal Mirelurks have, so just imagine that four times over. Suffice to say, your normal bullets aren't going to get you very far against these opponents. While they do begin to appear rarely in the wild after you've reached level 42, you can come across a special variant of the Blood Rager Mirelurk before that, as a part of a side quest. I know, the Mirelurk special variant has its own special variant, it's weird. But during the side quest, The Hunt, Far Harbor's local Marioner will request that you join her as she sails out to confront a mysterious ocean beast that's believed to be responsible for sinking a number of ships. They call it the Red Death and she's not quite sure what to expect. The only real records of it are oral accounts from a very, very small handful of survivors who describe it as a petrifying beast capable of destroying boats in a heartbeat. But even then, knowledge is flimsy at best, as nobody's really had a chance to get a good look at the thing. You're kinda going in blind. Nonetheless, once you've accepted the mission, the two of you will hop on a boat and eventually arrive on an island with a number of destroyed ships nearby, where the Marioner is convinced the monster lives. After a few moments of roaming the small landmass, the Red Death will reveal itself, and it'll turn out to simply be a scaled-down, completely docile Blood Rage Mirelurk with glowing eyes. Apparently, this frankly adorable bean had been inadvertently blinding ship captains and causing subsequent wreckages. Unfortunately, you'll still have to murder the cute thing to death. No matter, stay alert, because if Blood Rage Mirelurks can shrink ten times, then perhaps they can grow to such a scale as well. Next on our list, the Yao Guai are the irradiated descendants of what mankind once called bears, just even bigger and more aggressive. Normal Yao Guai offer quite the challenge to unprepared wastelanders, but the unique dusky Yao Guai type, which can enter the equation after the Soul Survivor reaches level 76, turns the threat level up to 100. You see, dusky Yao Guai don't differ much in appearance when compared to their generic counterparts, but with nearly two times the everything in stats, there's definitely a difference. Boasting 1,175 points of health and 200 melee damage, these bears can easily take a super mutant behemoth without breaking a sweat. Furthermore, Duskies will level with the player, so the stats I just mentioned are the best case scenario. Personally, I've only actually run into a Dusky Yao Guai once in normal gameplay, and I specifically recall just straight up fleeing after I realized how much health the thing had. 
If you ever spot a somewhat darker than normal Yaogwai in the distance, be ready for quite the ensuing fight. Because these bears, well, they're bad news. Coming in at number 3, introduced with the Nuka World DLC, Gator Claws are an entirely new type of mutant to the Fallout franchise. However, they may seem a bit familiar, as they share similar behavior, posture, and an appearance with the classic death claws we all know and love from the rest of the wasteland. According to various terminal entries, Gator Claws were created by one of the theme park scientists who survived the Great War. He did this by combining the brain cells of a super mutant with the genetic material of a chameleon. Not exactly what I would call a match made in heaven, but that's none of my business. While these mutants are quite common throughout Nuka World, once you surpass level 50, a special, much less common type of Gator Claw will rarely begin to spawn in. The Albino Gator Claw is in fact the only unique Gator Claw variant, and actually has pretty similar stats when compared to the default. What really makes these chameleons stand out is their, well, albino texture which honestly just makes them a lot easier to detect and harder to be surprised by. With 755 HP, there's still a cause for concern, but clearly not as combat efficient as the dusky Yaogwais. Regardless, next time you find yourself in Nuka World Safari, be aware that not all Gator Claws are the same. For fourth spot, Mirelurk Kings are nothing like the crustacean-based normal Mirelurks we tackled earlier on this list. Instead, Mirelurk kings seem to be more amphibian-like in their appearance and movement. It would seem in the Fallout universe, the word Mirelurk is more or less just a term used to describe any mutated being that lives close to the ocean, rather than some unified, distinct species. As normal Mirelurks are clearly based off of hermit crabs, Mirelurk hunters are based off of lobsters, and these Mirelurk kings seem to be more based on frogs, often hopping from place to place and attacking frantically and swiftly. They also boast a special type of ranged sonic attack that can prove difficult to counter. Well, after you've reached level 50, the Glowing Mirelurk King will be added into the potential spawn pool. Glowing Kings are rather odd, as they're the only unique variant on this list that actually has a much lower base health rating than the standard version. But don't be fooled, as these green monstrosities do have a higher armor rating and deal more damage. Furthermore, they'll also emit radiation when attacking. Much like their Blood Rage Mirelurk cousins, I think my favorite thing about the Glowing Kings is their appearance. Their darker texture and glowing trim is another color combination I'm a fan of. I really appreciate how Bethesda decided to design a special texture for these enemies that we rarely, if at all, get to meet in our playthroughs. But if you do ever see such a foe with this special look, try and take him out quickly, as his lower health and higher damage make such a strategy ideal. And finally, last on our list, we set our sails back to the island of Far Harbor, wherein fog crawlers can be found. A mutated descendant of what were once mantis shrimp, fog crawlers are already, as is, an intimidating foe. But the special enraged fog crawler is undeniably something to fear. Boasting a base HP of 2200, more than double that of a super mutant behemoth, and three times that of a normal crawler, plus 140 damage melee attacks, 15 more than a behemoth, enraged fog crawlers are not to be taken lightly. But their utterly absurd health and damage isn't even their most impressive stat. Enraged fog crawlers have a base damage resistance of 4,000. That is 25 times the armor rating of a Mirelurk Queen, and 20 times the rating of a normal fog crawler. Or Blood Rage Mirelurk, they have the same armor rating. Bullets are effectively useless against these creatures. For context, 1,000 rounds of concentrated minigun fire won't even get you 25% of the way through such a creature's health bar. The only way to confront such a beast with much of a chance is with heavy explosives or extremely powerful energy weapons. And even then, you're in for a tremendous struggle. Fog crawlers can and will outrun you, attack quickly, and can leap incredible distances. Simply put, there exists no harder boss fight in the game than with these bad boys. The good news is they're extremely rare, exclusive to the island, and won't even begin to spawn in until the sole survivor has made it to level 75. But if you ever find yourself on Far Harbor, pass that level and see a fog crawler that looks a bit green in the distance, then God help you because your guns certainly will not be enough. But with that, we are going to wrap up. Five more rare creature types you may have missed in Fallout 4. 
Which of the ones featured on this list did you find to be the most fascinating? In my opinion, that title easily goes to the Blood Rage Mirelurk. I just love the way those things look. And what are your own favorite unique creature variations that we didn't get a chance to tackle in one of these videos? Leave a comment down below. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. Thanks for watching, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everybody.